Warriors' third straight win at home. Before the fireworks, we have baseball on Brute Sports. Summer has arrived early in Pittsburgh, and tonight the Pirates host the St. Louis Cardinals from PMT Park in the middle game of the three-game series as the Buccos host the Red Hot Redbirds. Greg Brown along with Steve Blass. We're along the Allegheny River here on the Riverwalk. Steve, what a sight. It is spectacular tonight. You cannot show our city any better than this. A baseball night, people everywhere. Beautiful, gorgeous night. They're you can't beat it. You just can't beat it. Big crowd, fireworks night, and they want to see the Pirates win and get back on track. Try and get as hot as this weather. Right now, Vance Worley is in charge of trying to hold down the Redbirds. Yeah, after last night when they exploded for three home runs. Now, he pitched extremely well last time out against St. Louis. you got to do a couple things. You cannot put people on the base pass with this team that the Pirates are playing. They're just too good right now. So it's up to Worley. Pitch out in front. Keep the base running to a minimal and take your chances and see if we can score five tonight. If we score five tonight, I like our chances. You know, the offense was pretty good last night, all things considered, with Michael Waka on the hill. And tonight, it's Carlos Martinez on the mound for the Redbirds. He got beat up by the Chicago Cubs last time out. Last year, the Pirates had some good success against him. Early on, he's been very good, but he got tattooed by the Cubs. So maybe we're catching Martinez at exactly the right time. Carlos Martinez for the St. Louis Cardinals. Vance Worley for the Pittsburgh Pirates on a beautiful night for baseball in the Berg. Lineups and first pitch from PNC Park coming up next. to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. By Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. And they're coming across the Clemente Bridge. 
Pirates and Cardinals meet in the middle game of the three game series. The Pirates have lost the first four games of the season series to the Redbirds. And Starling Marte leads the way in the outfield. Starling Marte, three hits last night. Steve, we mentioned the offense, a dozen hits, but fall eight to five. Yeah, just when the, uh, the pitching falters a little bit. We start hitting the ball and we can't get anybody out. So. Let's check out the uh, Honda starting lineup for Mike Matheny's 22 and 7. St. Louis Cardinals John Jay will be followed by Colton Wong and Matt Holliday. Matt Adams hits cleanup. Johnny Peralta follows. Then Jason Hayward, Yadier Molina, Mark Reynolds is at third base. Matt Carpenter back in St. Louis as tests continue. And Carlos Martinez is on the mound. A regular heartbeat for Matt Carpenter. So. Mike Matheny has had to rearrange the lineup. Check out Vance Worley. Yep. His numbers brought to you by Hyundai and making his sixth start overall. Very good against the Cardinals last time out. Six innings, just one run given up. We've got to do something about people in red uniforms. Cincinnati and St. Louis. That's got to change. And you would like to have Worley have a repeat performance of what he did last Sunday. Check out the Honda defense behind him. Andrew McCutcheon is flanked by Gregory Polanco and Starling Marte. Up the middle, Jordy Mercer and Neil Walker. On the corners, it's Pedro Alvarez and Jung Ho Gung with Francisco Cervelli catching Vance Worley. So Gung gets the start at third base for the struggling Josh Harrison. You have to say that uh, Gung, the past, uh, well, maybe close to two weeks, has been one of the more consistent hitters when he's been in there. He's earned it. Yep. I mean, he's earned it. And, uh, and you combine that, of course, with Josh struggling. That's uh, that's why he's out there. Number 27 at third base. Vance Worley facing these St. Louis Cardinals for the fifth time in his career. And here's the pesky John Jay. He delivered again last night. And we're underway. Well, you just got to understand this Cardinal team. They're, they're red hot. They're they're leading the, the league in pitching. They're second in team offense. This ball. Right back to Worley. One up and one down. And we'll get to the Rivers Casino tips to win as John Jay has retired one three. Yes. Yeah, maybe we need more than two, but you know, keep the Cardinals in the cage. You know, they uh, hit the ball a long way. They were flying high and long last night. And let's invite everybody to the Marte Parte. He's having some fun with the bat. It's a good idea. First pitch, ball one to Colton Wong. Really, the difference in the ball game last night were two big three-run homers. Matt Holliday. And this guy broke it open in the seventh inning off Archimedes Caminero. It was a tough one last night because the Pirates had worked very hard to get back to within one. The bottom line, tough to overcome two three run bombs. Yep. Such a weird game because Liriano pitched well when you look at it. At times he was really struck out the side yeah. later on, and they're well kind of in the middle of the game. Oftentimes after a ball game, you'll hear a pitcher or a manager or pitching coach talk about a couple of mistakes. Bob Walk always talks about Steve Howe. That's really not not the case because throughout a ball game, there are more than just a couple of mistakes that maybe the hitters well, take advantage of mistakes. You get away with your share too. Yeah. yeah, as a pitcher for sure. But but it looked as though last night, maybe two or three mistakes, and they went deep as Alvarez makes a fine little play and a nice speed. That's the way you want to lead your pitcher over there. One three three one. Box it. Here's the chop wide at first base. Worley does his job, and so does Pedro. A little short hop backhand and the, the lead on the Allegheny Health Network Super Mo. That's perfect. At least chest high. You don't want your pitcher reaching down trying to find the ball and then the base. Worley will face Matt Holliday. Holliday's home run in the third inning was crushed. Just his second of the season. 
He's now batting 340, which is tied for sixth highest in the league. His on base percentage, a league best 466. You know, the, uh, people are saying, well, can the Cardinals keep this up? That's not really the question. What are the Cardinals going to do tonight? You know, who knows what's going to happen down the road? There's, there's so much time. Can they keep it up? No, they can't. But uh, they might tonight. And the Pirates might. So, I mean, it's just everything's washed away when they play the end for the next game. But uh, Mike Matheny's club is off to truly a phenomenal start. Best record in baseball, 22 and 7. Six and a half game lead on the Cubs. Reds are seven and a half back, and the Pirates trail by nine. Time to make up some ground. Yeah. Three wins better than any team in Major League Baseball. Worley falls behind Holiday three and one. Holiday was 0 for three last Sunday when Worley pitched in St. Louis. Johnny Peralta had a home run last night. Well, they weren't cheap ones either. Oh. All three of them. There's a line drive the other way by Matt Holiday. And that's going to drop in fair territory. Holiday thinking two. Here comes the throw, and it's just wide. If Polanco gets to it just a tad quicker and has a more accurate throw, Holiday, who does not run well at all, would have been out. He had a shot at him. I'm not sure if he got the ball in clean fashion down the right field line, but Holiday's got everything in front of him, so. He thinks his chances are good right at that point. Yeah, he picks it up and just just threw a little bit of a slider to second base. Yep. Pretty clean. Yep. yep. Just wide. And the thing that helps all those those kind of plays are that he gets the ball there on the fly. So you don't have to as an infielder take a short hop. Kind of get in between bounces. You get it in the air, you know exactly what you got to work with. Oh, and one on Adams. Matt Adams and hits this hard, but that Pedro Alvarez will keep it himself. Holiday is left stranded. To the bottom of the first. Pittsburgh, and yeah. it is just gorgeous, whatever you want to be doing. 86 degrees at game time. Toyota starting lineup. Gregory Polanco will be followed by Neil Walker and Andrew McCutcheon. Starling Marte once again in that cleanup spot with Pedro Alvarez following. Jung Ho Gung moves up to the sixth hole. Francisco Cervelli, Jordy Mercer, and Vance Worley round out the starting nine against Carlos Martinez. And make no doubt about it, this young Dominican is a power guy. Start number six, he's 3-0. That ERA before the last start against the Cubs was about a buck and a half or buck 70. Very, very impressive out of the gate. Three wins very, very quickly. And the stumble against Chicago. A little bit home run prone. He's given up five so far this year and in 13 career major league starts, 19 home runs. 
five this season. Polanco takes a strike. Let me correct that 14 and uh, I was looking at the minor league chart. So five this year five last year. So. 10 and 13 starts the numbers a little bit better in that category for Carlos Martinez Hit hard but right at Matt Adams takes care of Polanco. Early on some ground balls. Polanco is retired Carlos Martinez six foot 185 pounds is 23 years old. Puerto Plata. Dominican Republic. He is a power guy. He can throw it up in the in the high 90s. Curve ball change, standard package. Strike on Neil Walker. A little four game hitting streak for him. Was two for four on base three times in last night's game. Ball and one strike on the Pirates' second baseman was hit by a pitch. His second time to the plate in last night's ball game had an RBI single in the seventh inning. An opposite field hit in the ninth off Trevor Rosenthal, who wrapped up his 11th save. As the Cardinals won it 8-5. You, know, you look at the Carlos Martinez resume, Greg. Another St. Louis find if you will their their scouting system their organization is, is so strong mm -hmm. non drafted so they found him in the Dominican Republic in 2011 signed him and here he is. Ah, he went. Two and two. Walker regroups. And misses, so it's a full count. Pirates scored a run in the first inning last night. Scored a run in the first inning on Thursday night. And a bouncer to Adams. This time he'll toss to Martinez. And another ground ball out. Everything's in that direction yeah. so far. Take Everything, look. including the, uh, the base holiday base. double. So you look at Waka, 23 years old. This guy's 23 years old. You got Jaime Garcia. You got another super prospect down there pitching, and the pitching just keeps on coming. And I'm certainly happy about that with Adam Wainwright out for the season. Marco Gonzalez probably closer yep. to returning than is Jaime Garcia. They're rolling along without Wainwright and without Carpenter now. Bounced foul. Andrew McCutcheon. Six hits in his last 13 at bats. His average now up to 219. It was 188 when play began on Thursday. Strike. It's like Sangi's got the barbecue going, Steve. Oh yeah, Your buddy. Does yep. he ever? Sangi might be on fire. <laughs> and a guy that might be on fire is Andrew McCutcheon into the left center field gap. McCutcheon into second base with a stand-up two-out double. He's back. Split the gap. That's when it's fun to look through the smoke and see a ball that is well hit. I've seen him hit him a lot harder, but it helps because it's so perfectly placed in between him. It's a slow roller out toward the wall. And you see McCutcheon waiting just an extra split second there. On that swing, you know that timing is back. Cut from Marte, 95. So three uh, straight doubles for McCutcheon in terms of consecutive games. Doubled 
Now in three straight. Number 22. Marte was three for four last night. Just does get a piece of that. Well, that math is pretty easy. See if these two can deliver the first run of the ball game. Marte will have to do it with two strikes. By the way, McCutcheon now up to 226 already. Yeah, the meter's running. Yeah. <laughs> From 188 at the start of day, day Thursday, 226, and here's a 275 hitter. And Marte. Marte hitting at a 364 clip his last three games. But Martinez gets him. And the Pirates and the Cardinals both strand a runner at second after one. Back in St. Louis was out for a while with the extreme fatigue. He had started the Cardinals' first 27 games of the season. He left the ball game last Sunday against the Pirates after feeling dizzy and lightheaded. Also dehydrated. They found him to have an accelerated heart rate. And he's still having some tests done, hoping to rejoin the team in Cleveland on Tuesday as Mike Bethini's club will get going against an American League team for interleague play and some. Pirate fans with the uh, that's not the eye black. It's the eye black and gold. I guess. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Like the location of that pitch, but Paul Emil did not. Johnny Peralta is four for nine against Vance Worley. It was one for five with a home run last night. Falls behind Johnny Peralta, two balls and no strikes in his second year with the Cardinals. Former Tiger, one time Indian. Boy, Cervelli took a couple of shots last night on foul tip, Steve, and, and right away here in this ball game. The foot or the kneecap or shin somewhere. Peralta right up on top of home plate. Three and one. Yeah. 
goes in and misses. Yeah, Peralta Boy, was didn't miss by much uh, on the WB Mason strike zone. Work from inside. You want to crowd the plate? Crowd you. I'm trying to. Peralta was 0 for 2 against Worley on Sunday. Worley walked one batter. Gave up a home run to Matt Carpenter. Carpenter left moments later with that extreme fatigue. That was a game that went 14 innings. The Cardinals won it. And the Colton Wong home run is Jason Hayward. I was watching that game and he hit the home run. Then the, I heard the word lightheaded, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. But, uh, some heart issues, too. I mean, there's a, that, that raises a real red flag. I don't want to mess around with it. As Hayward looks at a strike. Last night, 0 for 3 with a walk. Snapped his little four game hitting streak. See the 429 career average against Worley. Mm. He takes a ball, not by much. Not by much. It's Paul Emmel. Toward the left center field gap. It's got some air under it and it's going to drop. Boy, I think it fooled Marte. Marte looked like he was going around it, maybe thinking it was going to drop and scoot to the wall. The yeah, way he was going around that ball. Right, and that ball was slicing back toward him. McCutcheon talking to him about it. Yeah, he usually closes the gap. Left hand batter slicing the ball back. You see Marte there on the left of your screen. Kind of go back instead of across. Yep. Circle root. And it goes as a double for Hayward. Second and third, nobody out. Now Yadier Molina. Infield will concede a run. And going the other way. And what a play by Walker! Triple play! How about that one? <laughs> Walker threw to third, then they threw back to second. A triple play! Triple play the hard way. Talk about a physically tremendous play, but how about mentally too, Steve? Yep, yeah, stand alert, what's available. Neil goes up and gets it. 
Great play to go up and get it. Time to jump perfectly. And here, I thought, what's he throwing to third for? Well, it's because he had to get the man at third first, and they knew they'd have an easier play at second. Yeah, because they had him hung out in between. Neil in the background. That's then they got to stop. Gung on the back. Now, Gung started to go off the field, and they're yelling. There's still one left. Yeah. Got one to go yet. <laughs> Molina trying to tell Hayward to get back to second. A triple play. You know, that gets even with Molina for that bizarre play when they were tagging people at third base and he was kind of directing traffic to. A couple years ago? Yeah, to get the uh, Cardinals out of it. That was. Wow, you talk about a wake up call. Maybe that's going to break all the scar tissue. Hey, you know, you might be involved, maybe, a, a player, if he's lucky, once in his career, involved in any way. Just being on the field for a triple play. Yep. Neil Walker has been involved back to back years. In fact, going back to September 14th against the Cubs, he was the middleman in the around the horn triple play here at PNC Park. Josh Harrison to Neil Walker to Andrew Lambeau. Jay Hay talked to Neil Walker about that. A rare occurrence in baseball, a triple play. Uh, and Neil knew he had to unload it quickly to third. That was the guy closest to a base. After that, it was easy. What a heads up play. 11th time that the Pirates have been involved defensively in a triple play. It's the first time that the Cardinals have hit into one since 2003. It was Raphael for call into an unassisted triple play. Call was with the Braves at the time. Jason Hayward, they figured that that ball was going to be lined into the gap, but Neil Walker, a leaping play, throwing to get Peralta at third. Jung Ho Gong then started to head off the field, but one more to get. And a leadoff walk. Now, Steve, if you're, if you're pitching and you've got runners at first and second, nobody out, you go from that in a hard hit ball to you're heading off the field. Runners at second and third. I mean, that's, Kenny, that's Kenny Wood on the most extreme right. You're devastated, you're, you're elated, and now you don't know who, who to thank first. <laughs> but uh, Neil Walker, what an athletic move to go upstairs yeah. that high and then realize the closest Cardinal to a base was third. He had to go there first. The rest of it was easy because they, they were in no man's land. Wow, what a what a play to watch. Chung Ho Gong going to try it, and he will reach on an infield hit. Well, we have seen Cardinal third baseman not make plays in back-to-back -back nights. Last night it was Pete Cosma playing third base on the ball that Marte hit. It went as an air. That'll be a hit. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of issues and a lot of problems around third base in this series so far. Just ask Josh. And Reynolds, of course, played there a lot with the uh, Diamondbacks, but has played mostly first the last couple of years. How quickly the Pirates set up shop after that dazzling play. Dazzling. Triple plays turned over the years. We mentioned last September. Josh Harrison, Neil Walker, Andrew Lambeau. Prior to that, it was the 2009 season in Cincinnati that Jack Wilson and Freddie Sanchez combined with Adam LaRoche. For a triple play in 1993. The Pirates turned a triple play in August. It was uh, the Cardinals involved. Jay Bell, Carlos Garcia, and Kevin Young turned a triple play on the Cardinals. Bouncing ball off the glove of Matt Adams. He scrambles, he throws, and gets. Fabulous play by Matt Adams to stay with it. Big men don't make that play like that. Very seldom. That's, that's moving a lot of man around down on the ground. Didn't quit on it. And uh, right, as you watch the replay, the throw to first base was perfect. And boy, you're scratching and biting and, and not knowing where you are and what you got to do. That, he kept everything under control and made a very good throw. Now second and third, they are going to play the middle infield back. 
Jordy Mercer can hit a ground ball to either Peralta or Colton Wong. The Pirates will take a lead. Mercer takes inside ball one. Nineteen eighty seven the Pirates turned a triple play against the Mets. Johnny Ray Sid Bream Daniel Gonzalez Jr. Ortiz involved in that triple play. And a strike it's one and one. Early key at bat right here. Obviously if they get Mercer then they're working against the pitcher. To is Mercer maybe a bit over anxious. Uh, Mercer is trying to get hot again as he did last year around this time. Well, they put Marte away with a breaking ball. He just got a swing and a miss on a breaking ball there to get to the count he wants. Point Park University tweets about that triple play crawling across the bottom of your screen. And this will score a run. Pedro Alvarez comes in on the wild pitch. I'll take it. Moments ago, the Cardinals were setting up shop with runners at second and third and nobody out. And about five minutes later, after Molina hits into the triple play, the ball hits off his body and Alvarez scores. Gong to third base. Infield in now. I, I wish there weren't two strikes now because this would be perfect. There's a lot of chaos, a lot of yeah. stuff going on for a squeeze play, but with two strikes, you don't see it that often. Just did get a piece of it. You, you see it a lot of times when there's a lot of things happen, a lot of things swirling around. Sometimes uh, uh, the defensive team is not settled. It's just too much going on too quickly. And you drop a bunt down, you get a cheap run. But uh, not the occasion for it. We'll see if Mercer can drive it in the conventional way with a base hit even. Shot off the glove of the second baseman Wong. And what a play there by Peralta. And the Pirates take a 2 0 lead. Maybe the bounces are going to go our way. That one did. RBI for Jordy Mercer. 4 6 3. Heads up, baseball. A lot of things happening just beyond the pitcher off the glove of the second base shortstop is involved. It is a busy busy <laughs> baseball gosh. game. Second inning and we've seen just about everything already. Wong ball does not stick in his glove but deflects it. Uh, once it did deflect as we saw in the replay not as tough a play for Peralta really this ball hit toward the right center field gap and over the head of John Jay. Vance Worley's into second. He stumbles around first. He's going to hold there. Vance Worley, a little bit of a stumble. A.J. Burnett says, hold on. Two's fine. Derek Cole loves it. we got a lot of things going on. And I know he was freaking three bases oh, yeah, all the way. But he shut it down wisely. A little bit of a stumble around the first base bag. Worley rips the 97 mile per hour fastball past John Jay. That'll teach you to play him short. Oh, Worley. now what do I do? Take a left. Whoops. Take a left. There you go. All right. You took a left. All right. All right. Now shut her down. He had a double last year against Atlanta in August. Well, you think about already some hard hit balls by the Pirates. Well, uh, Even some of the outs. Yeah, Martinez coming off that tough outing against the Cubs. Yeah, Vance Worley goes from runners at second and third, nobody out, to a triple play, to two nothing and a double. That's why you see a lot of pitchers in therapy. <laughs> going through all that kind of stuff. 
My goodness. That's turning the whole thing upside down for sure. Well, on the other side of the coin, you've got Carlos Martinez, who was in the hole at the top of the second inning with Mark Reynolds on deck. He was watching his teammates set up shop. Thought he might be going into this bottom half with a lead. That's ripped to right field. That might put it down the scoreboard. Takes one hop. Polanco in the second with a double. It is three nothing. Buckos. Saturday night at the movies. You can't hit a ball much harder than Gregory Polanco just did. And now Derek Lewicus coming out to talk to his young right-hander. That ball was smoked. Gets the body out of the way and just gets the hands in and the good part of the bat on that baseball. That had that sound. That's Whirly. Oh, yeah. See him kick it into that different gear. What do you go, 4 6? Polanco RBI double that's his eighth RBI of the season Todd Tomzik the head trainer check it in with Vance Worley yeah. what a long strange trip it's been around the bases 10 doubles for Polanco by the way has him in the top 10 in the National League keep it going Sirich it's a chuckle. Yep. Vance, keep running, keep turning left whenever you come to a base. One ball, one strike on Neil Walker. Last night it was the Cardinals that had the extra base machine going. Eight of their 11 hits went for extra bases. Here the Pirates already and have collected three doubles. Morley, I tell you, you get that treatment, you'll confess to anything. You tell them where they hit the gold. But then it goes away and you got to go back out there. He gets Walker, but the Pirates. He had a couple of runs, some hard hit balls. Gregory Polanco drives in one and. you by the Chevy Malibu and your Western PA Chevy dealers. 
and by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. This Day Automotive, this day in Pirates history, another wild one. Back in 1979, Pirates played one of the most memorable games of the season. They were involved in four bench-clearing brawls in Atlanta, a 17-9 victory of the Braves. Four players hit by pitches, prompting the brawls. Five players tossed, both managers. Bucko offense, Omar Moreno, Tim Foley each had four hits, scored three times. John Milner hit a grand slam. Bill Robinson hit a couple of home runs. Oh, even uh, third base coach Joe Lynette was ejected. And our man Teak was involved in that. Did some research. Mm -hmm. And to Colby. And we'll talk about it on the post game with Rob. The ninth inning, Roland Office took an inside pitch from Teak and started to walk toward the mound. And bench is cleared before things settled down. Office then threw his helmet into a group of pirates. Ed Ott picked it up and destroyed the helmet. Well, you get close to Ed Ott, he'll destroy you along with the helmet. Four brawls. You know what? That's a lot of running for the bullpen guys. Yeah. They got to come in every time. You know, that's part of the deal. They've got to come all the way from the bullpen, get engaged, pick somebody out they want to go after. Usually, hopefully, somebody smaller. <laughs> then they go back and they got to do it three more times. Part of the deal. And our guys have even further because the, the back the card, Yeah. The, and the door might be clogged with Cardinal guys trying to get through. It's a mess. Ball is a fair ball. Reynolds is out. Is there a full moon? Must be. We'll find out. That might be one of the shortest outs recorded in the history of baseball. Be the easiest out ever recorded by Cervelli. Just a nice gentle touch when he picked up the baseball. Watch him after he grabs the baseball. Watch this. Just a little. There we go. Professional respect. Yep. Here's Carlos Martinez. And he swings away right away. He'll be retired. Two outs. Number 18 to number 18. Buckos battle the Cardinals tomorrow. Mother's Day. All moms get a reusable tote bag courtesy of the MLB Network. And we invite you to stop by the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone before the game on Federal Street. And after the game, kids and moms get to run the bases courtesy of the original pizza logs. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. Greg, you go, even can go back to the start of that wild bottom of the second. Free pass and then an infield single. And then, then it got interesting. Yep. Humble beginnings. And then a three spot. Game to say the least so far is John Jay. Yeah, entertaining. We just mentioned Omar Moreno, who was another another number 18. He had that uniform number for the Pirates for a while. And you might have heard our radio pregame the other day with Omar Moreno, who is going to join the Pirates about once a month. Also do some work in the minor leagues, working with some of the, especially the Latin players, has a good uh, relationship with them, the outfielders, and trying to get them to steal those bases. Omar Moreno is one of the one of the best. Ball three on John Jay. And look who's here. Frank Thomas, the original. Yep. There's a strike. Frank Thomas uh, in his retirement years has done wonderful things for the Meals on Wheels program, part of our alumni group that uh, he's been involved with for a long time. Does great work in Another strike trying to come back after being down 3 and 0. And to the shortstop. Sure. <laughs> it's all good tonight so far.
Robbie and Smikowski. Carlos Martinez takes the mound with one of his very close friends uh, in his memory each and every day, and that is Oscar Taveras, who was killed in a car crash back in October in their native Dominican Republic. And every time Carlos Martinez takes to the mound, he writes the initials OT behind the mound as we get a closer look of the OT that he wears. Carlos Martinez is wearing jersey number 18 as well in Carlos, or excuse me, in Oscar Tavares' memory. The two play professional baseball together starting back in A-ball back in 2011, but their friendship goes all the way back to when they were little leaguers together. Now, Greg and Steve, I asked him about wearing the number 18 and what that means for him, and he was very emotional when he answered me. He said, it's an honor to wear Oscar's number because he was my best friend and a brother. He keeps Oscar in his mind every day, so to wear his number, he still, feel, uh, still feels that Oscar is a part of him each and every day he takes to the mound. That's uh, quite a way to uh, pay tribute to a friend asking for permission to, to change that number. And there's a line drive, and Holiday is back to make the catch. Well, Andrew McCutcheon now suddenly is hitting everything hard. McCutcheon light. Doubled into the left center gap in the first. Lines out to Holiday to start the bottom of the third. And that was hit just as hard. Yep. Now uh, Molina going to talk to Carlos Martinez, who has had some... Uh, I don't know if you want to say maturity issues previous couple of years, but uh, they have really, and Mike Matheny's kind been a big part of it. Tried along, to, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Molina, one of the guys that has taken him under his wing. You see, he's grown up a lot, and obviously it was, uh, oh, look at Molina, man. He's, look up at that scoreboard. Giving him a talking to. Well, if you're an older brother or a Dutch, Dutch uncle, you're not just going to put your arm around him yeah. every time. You look him in the eye and say, hey, listen, there's some reality here involved that you have to deal with. And, you know, it, uh, he's, he's gone through some difficult things, still growing up in, in his own way. Strike on Starling Marte. Marte struck out to end the first. Sometimes uh, somebody's got to just stand you up. Last night, Michael Walker pitched six innings, six hits, two runs, got the win. He's 5 and 0. Oh. Quick strike out of Marte. Download the MLB.com ballpark app on your mobile phone and check in next time you're here at PNC Park. Free app personalizes your PNC Park experience with check-in offers, rewards, social media, and exclusive team content. Download the ballpark app with Google Play or the App Store on your iPhone or Android. And Alvarez takes a strike. He walked to get the rally started last inning. Been a big part of his game recently. The free passes, but a couple of strikes. And he's not so sure about that one as he turns to talk to Paul Emmel. It was a strike. And that in the dirt he offered. Well, the Pirates go down in order, but lead three nothing.
Ortiz lent guidance to fellow countryman Gregory Polanco. Hit the links with John Holtzcombe and much more. A new Inside Pirates baseball presented by Allegheny Health Network debuts tonight after post game on Root Sports. Along the banks of the Allegheny River, the Pirates have a 3 0 lead over the Redbirds. And Sean Rodriguez is in left field. Hmm. Marte has been pulled from the ball game. And that is curious. Yeah, that's not the best thing you can see, whatever the cause is. Whether it's about injury related. But we don't see him in the dugout, so it's quite possible that uh, he's in the trainer's room, maybe hurt along the way, though. Clint Hurdle has uh, over the years when he's needed to scratch a guy from the lineup for other reasons. Well, he's walking uh, away, and Todd Tomzik, head trainer, is going to follow him. We'll let you know when we know. Yep. A base hit for Fulton Wong to start the fourth. Pirate killer currently. There's always one. There's Matt Holiday. Holiday doubled the right field his first time up. I think the only thing we haven't seen maybe a swing and a miss and the ball hits you right in the stomach. I haven't seen that no. tonight. No. I had that happen a lot of years ago. You did. You swung and missed it a pitch and it, it hit you hit, in the stomach. It hit me right in the stomach, knocked the wind out of me. I sat right down on home plate and home plate up there said, I'm sorry, son, but but you're out. And I, said, ooh, ooh. I, could, I couldn't breathe to argue with him. I didn't know. I didn't know what to say. I couldn't say anything. Who was your manager at the time? Uh, Do you remember? Ed Kirby is my senior year in high school. <laughs> Playoff game. Two on holiday. And a bouncer and passed. Gong into left. So it's first and second. Now let's go back to the studio. Dan Potash with a game break. Harper absolutely on fire. Whether you like him or hate him, he can flat out hit. Ooh. Where's our ground ball from Matt Adams? Where is it? Steve Bryce Harper, six home runs his last three games, eight for 12, 12 RBIs, seven runs scored. Pretty decent candidate for player of the week, I think. And Adams grounds it sharply to Alvarez. A bobble, a drop, a throw. Gets that man, and no throw to first. There is the ground ball. If he gets it clean, they got a real good chance. Hard hit, but right at him. Holiday is erased. You wonder if Pedro took a peek at the runner going by. Got. Concentration. You know, they're fortunate to get it out there because as he kind of moved his feet, he kicks that ball away. Not only is everybody safe, but who knows where the ball ends up? Well, they get the out at second. Three six on the put out. Johnny Peralta walked to start the second, but he was on base when Yadier Molina hit into a triple play. 
Well, let's get conventional here with a ground ball. Check swing, foul, and Cervelli gets it again. Never good to get hit in the same place twice. I mean, guys foul ball off the same foot. He got whacked near that foot the first time. Last night was worse. He's <laughs> taking a beating. Life of a catcher. So 0 and 2 on Peralta. Foul up against the screen. Runners at the corners. A broken bat. That's going to drop in. And the Cardinals are on the board on an 0 2 pitch. Worley able to break Peralta's bat. But he brings home Colton Wong. Way in on him. Yep. It's where you want to throw it. You want to saw somebody off, and he did. Had enough muscle to get it out over the infield. He made the pitch you wanted. Yeah. Would you like to be have have it be in a little further? Yeah. Yeah. In a perfect world, but. You've seen what's been going on tonight. It's not a perfect world or perfect type of a game. Let's see. Game day checklist, Steve. What do you got? Catch a fly ball, eat hot dogs, win, go home. <laughs> a couple other categories you could put in there, but that's a good start. That's a good shirt. <laughs> one ball, one strike on Hayward. Hit that ball to left field, but uh, Marte seemed to kind of misjudge. This ball hit well. Rodriguez back, still going, and over his head and short hops the wall. One run in. Okenda will hold the second. It's three to two as Hayward doubles to left. Adams in Peralta to third. That ball had a lot of carry to it. He goes downstairs, and that's a decent looking pitch. Just goes down and gets it. Rodriguez waiting, playing the bounce about as good as you can. Get the ball in and see where everybody is. Well, Hayward is now eight for 16, 500 career against Vance Worley. Here's Yadier Molina with one out, second and third. Molina was at the plate with nobody out, second and third in the second inning, and lined a ball that looked it was going to head to the right center gap, but Neil Walker went way up to get it. And this time Molina goes the other way, and this is going to score a couple. Yadier Molina to right field with a double, and the Cardinals now lead it. What has happened here? Yadier Molina doubles in a pair. Well, dig your heels and we got a barn burner. Compare these two games to what we saw in St. Louis last weekend. 2-1-2-1-3-2. Two, one, two, one, two. And that, that's not a bad looking pitch on the bottom of the strike zone. The, the, the Cardinals are on fire. Molina hitting over 400 with men in scoring position. Brings home Peralta and Hayward. Ray Searage with the visit. Seven doubles for Molina and 15 RBIs on the season. 4 3 St. Louis. 
and Matt Adams hit the ball. He tattooed the ball right on the money to Pedro Alvarez. So a lot of balls being centered here in the top of the fourth inning. Mark Reynolds. He takes ball one. Reynolds hit a little dribbler right in front of the plate. Last inning. Starting at third base with Matt Carpenter in St. Louis. A four spot in the fourth for the Redbirds. Pirates scored three in the second. All this pitching that was going on. Well, it's a lot about the bats. Look at the turnaround after the triple play. The Pirates get to the plate in the bottom of the second, score three quick runs. Worley has a one, two, three third. Then in the bottom of the third. McCutcheon lines out to left field and Molina gave Carlos Martinez a good talking to. And then he promptly strikes out Marte and Alvarez. And now his team goes out and scores him four runs. And he drives in a pair with a double. And Carlos Martinez on deck. Three and one. Don't take Molina for granted either. If you don't pay attention to him. And they're not really. All four. Second walk of the game. For Vance Worley. You know, it's amazing, Greg. You can watch a lot of baseball games. They plot along and plot along and plot along. You say, oh, it's such a slow game. Stuff like this can come so quick. The Pirates three spot, their four spot, they're still in business. There's the bullpen phone. Euclides Rojas. Gonna get someone loosening in the bullpen. Looks like Rodimus Lees. Martinez gonna try and bunt the runners 90 feet. Fouls that one off. The Cardinals with seven more hits already tonight. Scored eight runs on 11 hits last night. Once that one foul, Cervelli runs to third, but a foul ball called by Paul Emmel. Pedro Alvarez in on top of Martinez. Vance Worley's responsibility is on the third base side. Jose Okendo going to talk with Martinez. Supposed to be fair, but no cigar. Jose Okendo been around the Cardinals for a long time. The secret weapon, like Shannon used to call him. Now he says, swing away. That's what he's telling him to do. And look at this. Nobody covering anywhere. Oh boy. You see Pedro Alvarez and nobody over at first base in time, so Cervelli took a look in two different directions. Nobody home. He was too late to go to third, and then nobody at first. It looked as though he might have had a play at third with Gung, though. He looked that way. Gung was there on that replay. <laughs> oh, and one on John Jay. Center field. Be out there. 
Cardinals will get another run. It's five to three. Here again, see what we can see here. Martinez swinging away. How close is Molina to third base? Jung goes back. Yeah. I, you know, he didn't look to third right yeah, away. He yeah, went toward first he right to, away. Yep. You're exactly right. And they did have a play at third base. Looked to first. And then by the time he did look to third, he didn't have a play. That, uh, that was on Francisco. And Wong single to start this inning. Now, many times a bunt will go out and an infielder get it, and the catcher will call the base to throw to. But he was out in front. Uh, I, I think it was his field of vision. I mean, I would think you're kind of automatically going to look and see if you got the force. Yeah, at third first. You, you, Usually yeah. you see them look to third and then, first and then before throwing to first. Okay, you get a if quick you look, first. you don't have it, and then you got your play at first base. That was peculiar. Maybe I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Automatically, you usually see those catchers look right away to third. Yeah, I mean, it's I, the first look. I don't think anybody needs to holler at you. You've got everything out in front of you. Well, two and one, two outs, and a 5 3 Cardinal lead. Ripped foul. Wow, he jumped on it. Bolton Wong, very aggressive. Mike Matheny said that recently. I think he said, I wish I had been that aggressive when I played. Wong. He attacks the ball. Former first round pick. The Hawaiian native. Bolton Wong. Out of the University of Hawaii. First rounder in 2011. It has been a long inning and a hot night. Three and two. Thirty-one pitch inning, and he probably has to get Colton Wong to stay in this game as Radames Lees is ready. And we'll see. That might be it for him. Matt Holiday is coming to the plate. Clint, Clint is moving around. And he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it at this point. Holiday has doubled to right, single to left. It's the third walk for Vance Worley. Might be looking here in the fourth inning of the at bat of the game to keep keep him in sight. Holiday with 17 RBIs on the season. Former batting title champ. Matt Holiday. Now with a five game hitting streak and with the bases loaded a 391 career hitter and pops it up shallow center Mercer and Walker and it's Mercer to make the catch wild wild night five three Cardinals.
easy game. We saw the triple play a couple innings ago. And we received a tweet using the hashtag Bucks Booth. Has there ever been a 4-5-4 triple play? The answer to that is no. That is the first 4-5-4 triple play turned in the history of baseball. Neil Walker started and ended the triple play with Jung Ho Gung right in the middle. And the first thing Neil Walker did, Greg and Steve, was walk over to the authenticator right there on the inside part of the uh, Pirates dugout near Clint Hurdle. And he passed it along. The ball is going down in history. Not sure what's going to happen to it, but it was taken out of play and authenticated. We'll give you a further update as uh, time goes along here. But one of the more unique things I think you guys have seen, and you've been in baseball a long, long time. Hey, Robbie, that's unbelievable. The first 4-5-4 triple play in the history of Major League Baseball. That's incredible. Now, of all the things in the history of the game, it's the first ever 4-5-4 triple play. And Neil had to wear with all right there just to walk over and get it right into the hands of the authenticator because wow. uh, Major League Baseball has an authenticator for those that don't know at every game and any special thing that happens, it goes down officially in his mark. So we'll see what the Pirates do with the baseball. Oh well, you know what? And, and a lot of things are authenticated that aren't special. So this is really unique. That is uh, that's astounding, and we're all here to see it. First 4-5-4 triple play in the history of baseball. There's a Jung Ho Gong base hit to start the fourth. This second. I'll tell you what, if I was Neil Walker, that authenticator would never see that baseball. <laughs> I, I'd have that in my pocket. Yep. Jung Ho Gong aboard. We understand those folks came all the way in from uh, South Korea. The young lady with the... Uh, 70 style mustard pirates cap as her folks came in from South Korea to see Jung Ho Gung play. They're liking it so far yeah. tonight. Well, let's go back to work. This is uh, this is going to be interesting. We're not we're not done with the entertainment yet. Only the beginning. We are told that uh, Sterling Marte left the game with the dizziness. Cervelli in the hole 0 and 2 now. Strike three called. Five Ks for Martinez. Adding insult to injury for Cervelli. Literally. Well. On the corner. Jordy Mercer. Mercer drove in a run with a ground out in the second. Strikes on the Bucko shortstop with Gung at first. And that's Worley. And has allowed the five runs on eight hits. Rob Scahill loosening in the bullpen with the pitcher spot due up. Steve Lombardozzi is on deck.
fifth inning. Let's check out our Chick-fil-A double play. Pretty routine. Peralta to one, but then the throw. Matt Adams has to get that big body off toward the right field side of the back. The way this going, game is going tonight, you never know. Even a routine double play could be an adventure. Yeah, this is uh, it's a little weird. Vance Worley is still in there thanks to that double play. So he'll get another inning in. Not that he wanted the double play turn. You get my drift. Matt Adams has grounded out twice, once into a fielder's choice. Rips this one right at the shortstop. Well, I'll tell you, there are a lot of balls hard hit tonight. It is a hitter's night in Pittsburgh. This is an out. Yep, it's official, it's an out. Johnny Peralta. Do you think, Steve, that if Worley has a quick one, two, three efficient inning, does Clint Hurdle let him bat leading off the bottom of the fifth? Again, he had Lombardozzi on deck and had not, Mercer not hit into the double play. Lombardozzi yep. would have hit for Worley. Maybe to save the bullpen. Maybe. Maybe to save a bench player for later. I mean, with men on well, and yeah, two yeah. outs, he obviously would have pinch hit for yeah, him. Yeah. He would have had uh, at least one man on. And Mercer not hit into the double play. I mean, yeah, the ball game is not out of control. Right. Two and two. To uh, get out of this fifth inning to continue that conversation. Work to do here. Broken bat hit for Peralta his last time up and scored a run. It's Peralta who walked to start the second. Jason Hayward then doubled him to third, and then Yadier Molina hit into the first four, five, four. Triple play in the history of Major League Baseball. Neil Walker going way up to get it. Finishing what you start. Everybody deserves a second chance to get that baseball. Still two and two as Peralta fouls off a few pitches here. And another. Hit hard. Back onto the field of play. Peralta set a Cardinal franchise record last year with home runs. And lines this ball to left. Clint's not going to watch much more of that. Another hard hit ball. Johnny Peralta with a double. Save big when you use your Giant Eagle Advantage card. Save up to $10 on tickets for every Sunday home game when you show your Giant Eagle Advantage card at the BNC Park ticket windows. Or go to pirates.com slash advantage card. 
Another one of those coming up tomorrow, Mother's Day. Also, Kids' Days at the ballpark. Ball one on Hayward. That's hit hard and another bobble a step on the bag and Alvarez decides not to throw to second gets the out at first. Some hard hit balls right at Alvarez and potential double play balls have fielded cleanly but both times the one hit by Adams last inning this one by Hayward because of the drop. He picks it up right away and steps on the bag has a chance at two and he decides not to risk it. Over at second. Well, that, that became a scramble. Molina grounds this to the shortstop, Mercer. And that'll do it. Four and a half play, five three Cardinals. Twilight coming to stage AE May the 28th. Here's a video as we check out the UPMC scoreboard. It's 5 3 in favor of the Cardinals. And we got our answer. Lombardozzi will bat for Worley. Steve Lombardozzi up from AAA. Andrew Lambeau placed on the disabled list. Lombardozzi, who had hit safely in 10 of his last 11 games at Triple A Indy 415 pace. Switch hitter batting left handed. Saw him in spring training. Big league experience, mainly with the Washington Nationals. Played some games with Baltimore last year. And a career 286 hitter. And his dad played in the big leagues. A lot of years with the Twins. His dad had a great 1987 World Series against the Cardinals. Hit 412 in that 1987 World Series at a home run in game one and a 10 1 Twins victory. Lombardozzi down on strikes. Martinez.
Martinez now with six strikeouts. This is Gregory Polanco. And our barrel automotive league leaders in the stolen base department. Gregory Polanco trailing Billy Hamilton of the Reds and Marlins D. Gordon. Nine for Polanco and ten tries. And Martinez has really settled down since the talking to. That now six strikeouts. One ball, one strike. So Vance Worley, five runs, nine hits for just the second time in his career. Did not strike out a batter when going at least five innings. This is 79th start tonight. And last time out against the Cardinals, uh, very efficient uh, work, six innings, a walk, and five strikeouts. So Polanco draws a free pass. Second walk for Carlos Martinez. And keep in mind on a night where they're hitting the ball right on the button, Martinez has given up five home runs in his first five starts. Certainly a candidate. Lock all one out base runner and guns it over there and an uncomfortable play had to be made by Adams. There's been a lot of discomfort. Yeah. Everywhere. Just certain games have no rhythm to them. Choppy, yeah. bouncy. This one certainly hasn't settled down. There goes Polanco, taken for a ball throw, and an out call at second for now from Andy Fletcher. What a tag from Peralta. Take a look at this once more. Yep, got him. Real quick tag. Bang, bang, play. A strong throw, of course, from Molina. <laughs> Heck of a call from Andy Fletcher. Molina. Who uh, picked up his seventh consecutive gold glove last year despite missing 40 games with a torn. Ligament in his right thumb suffered against the Pirates last summer. Still went on to win his seventh consecutive gold glove. I remember talking to Tony La Russa, his one of his last uh, years, talking about Yadier Molina. And very much the foundation. Drive the right, clear the deck, cannonball coming. Neil Walker. With his second home run of the season, the Pirates within one. Five to four. No questions about that one. Left the bat, left the yard. It's that kind of night. The Pirates get back to within one. They did it last night. Trying to climb back tonight. That got out of here quick. He's having a game, isn't he? He is. Number six given up by Martinez. Oh, the other way in a line drive out 
at second. And Neil Walker's home run gets the Bucks to within one. Over the Clemente wall. Martinez, Cardinals pitching coach. Martinez just gave up that home run to Neil Walker and not happy about it. But Mike Matheny wasn't real thrilled with his reaction. And Yellowwood bringing the lumber. Walker's home run. Second of the season. First since April the 12th at Miller Park in Milwaukee. Little yard work. And that one did not scrape the top of the home run fence. That got well up into the seating area. Rob Scahill is the new Pirates pitcher. And then once again, Yadier Molina coming over. Maybe to settle Martinez back yeah. down. A little animated. Might be letting him know that number twenty six is the boss. Rob Scahill has been terrific. ERA under one. Just a couple of scoreless innings Wednesday against the Reds. Also a couple of scoreless Sunday in St. Louis. Strike three, Mark Reynolds down. Rob Scahill is quietly gaining uh, some momentum in terms of uh, his importance. In ball games now, Clint Hurdle is starting to rely on him more and more. There's always a pecking order in that bullpen. You start with Melanson in the ninth, Watson in the eighth, Jared Hughes setting up Watson in the seventh. And now you're wondering, Steve, is uh, and this is what happens when you start to perform. Yeah. What is that? Clint, uh, you say he's getting some traction. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's how you impress and that's how you move up. Uh, and then uh, it gets to a point uh, uh, where you're where you're making progress, and do you move him in a different role, or he's doing really just exactly what you want where he is? And of course, that's all up to Clint and Ray. Rob Scahill facing Carlos Martinez. Up 
popped up toward the seats. And going to be out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Martinez hit that ball in front of the plate with two strikes. He was trying to bunt runners over initially and then he swung away with two strikes. Francisco Cervelli jumped out in front of the plate, grabbed the ball, looked toward first where there's no one covering, and then it was too late. Think about getting Molina. Third. Look at this ball. Yeah. How about the, that? The, the ball. English. Enough English to come back into fair territory. Another reminder plays like that, don't quit on them. Any health network slows it down so you can see the rotation bringing it back along the dirt. Get that ball in your hand, put it in the glove, and hold on for dear life. You don't know what's going to happen with the contact. Was it last night that Molina had a ball in his hand in the glove? Yeah. Got knocked away. I, uh, McCutcheon tagging it home. Yep. John Jay has bounced to the mound line to short and a sacrifice fly to center field. And back to Scahill. One, two, three for the reliever. Pirates trail by one. well we had not one but two miracle league celebrations going on the first was in indiana county you're seeing some video here where the pirates charities miracle league field had its grand opening greg brown was there along with john wainer to celebrate that and the miracle league of the south hills had the grand opening of their new playground as well that one was two years into making and former pirate sean casey helped raise close to eight hundred thousand dollars greg and uh uh, Greg and Steve to get this one built. Pirates Charities made a contribution as well. It's a one-of-a-kind playground with the PNC Park backdrop. A lot of good stuff, Greg. Well, right away, Sean Rodriguez, a base hit into center field, starting Marte's replacement. Thanks, Robbie. The good stuff that uh, Pirates Charities has done. Uh, somewhat eight fields when you think about what they've done in western Pennsylvania, down in West Virginia, and even down at the Bradenton area of uh, Miracle League Field, where kids who uh, were once told they couldn't play baseball now can. Simple as that. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a roast uh, in downtown Pittsburgh. Sean Casey was the roastee, and he's able to make a donation uh, in his name, and it went to uh, the Miracle Field out in Upper St. Clair. They've done a great job all over the place with these fields. It, they are miracles. Now, Bob, it takes so many people to get involved. Uh, you saw that firsthand today in Indiana County. But Bob Nutting, you saw him down there. Other folks from the Pirates helping uh, 
christen that field opening day there this morning in Indiana. Mike Sherry has been his uh, really his direction for several years now. He's helped put that together. His dream has become a reality. One ball, one strike on Alvarez. One strike. And one and two. Alvarez struck out to uh, end the third inning. Walked in the second. Very close. Martinez getting up a leadoff hit to Sean Rodriguez has allowed seven hits. The Pirates scored three in the second. Neil Walker homered in the fifth. Lays off that pitch. Snap throw to first. You never know with Yadier Molina. Nope. He's everywhere. Even with his reduced body, losing a lot yes. of weight. Or top of the batter, and sometimes left hand hitter up there. If you're a runner at first base, you don't see the initial part of that that uh, throw, and sometimes it's too late to recover. Sean got back okay, and a walk and a, a big pitch there from Martinez. See this young pitcher, he has. Emotional. We've seen it already tonight. Things kind of go against him. You can take advantage. See if Chung Ho Gung can do just that. I'll check with Rick Sofield. Pedro getting a bunch of walks lately. We agree. Let's go, Bucks. Two on. Nobody out. Gong is two for two. Clint Hurdle talking about this being a very confident man, a big time star in South Korea. And just now getting more and more opportunities to play, and uh, the more success he has had in the last couple of weeks, the more confident he is becoming. This full house wants to see him keep going now with uh, this. Nice little run he's on. It'd be hard to step down from being a star with the understanding yeah. you're going to be going to a different country as a part time player. Interviewed him and his uh, interpreter the other day, HK Kim, and asked him about walking around Pittsburgh and it pretty much anonymity. One and two, and how different that is. And for the time being, he likes it <laughs> because you could walk down the streets of Seoul, Korea, and yeah. he'd be mobbed. Two. And Martinez strikes him out for the first out of the sixth inning. Certainly a big strikeout for Martinez. He's sitting on a one run lead and he's in trouble. And he throws a perfect cutter, slider, breaking ball, whatever you want to call it, right on the outside corner and continuing to break away. Seven strikeouts for Martinez. Here is Cervelli. He's 0 for 2. Struck out looking his last time up. Bullpen action for the Cardinals. Pitch number 85 coming. St. Venus. Strike and Molina out again to yeah. talk with. And, and, you know, sometimes you talk about what he's saying to the pitcher, but you're 
if you're inside Molina's mind, he might be thinking, I got to nurse this kid through this inning. I got to get him through this and maybe get him some bullpen help. And then uh, we'll go about conveying that if that is indeed the subject of that conversation. He recognized that his kid's in trouble and he, he's going to find a way. This is a, this is a big, uh, big deal for both teams right here. Two and one on Cervelli. A lot of people out here tonight. If the Pirates can break the ship from last night. Three and one. This could be a continuation pitch for Martinez. If he misses again to stay in this ball game. Coming up. Breaking ball and a 3 1 pitch for a strike. Corey Hart would bat for Scahill. Yeah, the pitch of the night to this point. Pirates going to put the runners in motion, though. All four, and the bases are loaded with Jordy Mercer. And now does Mike Matheny make a change? I'm guessing yes, because. Manus is their double play guy. Here's their ground ball guy. And he is on his way out to make the change. Two walks in the inning. Four walks on the night as Martinez exits. Game brought to you by Miller Light. It is five to four. The Pirates have the bases loaded. One out. Jordy Mercer will be facing his ground ball pitcher Seth Manus. Yep, this guy is the Cardinals. Jared Hughes. Yep. A lot of double plays between uh, last year and the year before. Bunch twenty-eight double plays, I think. Uh, in total. Mercer is 0 for 8 in his career against Seth Manus. Sean Rodriguez started the inning with a base hit. Pedro Alvarez walked. Francisco Cervelli walked. And a drive towards center field. Jay going back toward the warning track. Nearing the wall. It is off the top of the wall. This is going to score a couple. The Pirates regain the lead. Jordy Mercer doubles off the center field fence. There. 
No ground ball double play as he gave that a big time ride. Hold on to your hats. We do have a barn burner. A base is loaded double for Mercer. Six by Pittsburgh. Here is Corey Hart to pinch hit for Scahill with the infield in. Hart bounced into a double play last night against Manus. 0 and 1. Take a look at this double. Goes downstairs, gets under the ball, doesn't hit the top of the ball. It's below the center and get on your bikes and ride. Bold foul and a heart in the hole, 0 and 2. Carlos Martinez watching the Pirates score twice on this double off the fence. Well, pretty close off the uh, padding, it looks like. Watch this. Now yeah. just below the padding. There's a fly ball to center field. Cervelli is going to tag at third. Jay makes the catch and throws toward third, and Mercer is going to be doubled up. The Pirates will score the run. On the sacrifice fly by Corey Hart and Jordy Mercer's double got the Bucks the lead back. Now it's seven to five. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Ask a neighbor. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks! Well, this is absolutely a wild one. Here at PNC Park. Jordy Mercer's double off the fence in center. Got the Pirates... The lead back. The book closed on Carlos Martinez after the Corey Hart sacrifice fly. Seven runs charged to Martinez. Mercer was doubled off second. Hart still gets the sack fly. And now Jared Hughes tries to protect the lead. Fun never ends. Fireworks before the fireworks. It's not very often you set the fireworks off after a game and it's anticlimactic. <laughs> See if Jared Hughes can have a clean inning. He has uh, at times had some bumps in the road when he starts an inning. He's been very effective when he comes sprinting in from the bullpen with men on base. But this at times can be a challenge for Hughes. There's a bouncing ball right to Walker. 
get Wong out. That's great. That's a headline. Here's up Matt Holiday with one out. Hughes pitched on Thursday against Cincinnati. Pitched the eighth inning. Marlon Bird hit a line drive right back at him. Hit the off his glove and he struck out Joey Votto and hit Todd Frazier. Glenn Hurdle brought in Tony Watson at that point. Ninety four on the fastball upstairs to Holiday. Sinker ball pitcher. Usually can't go upstairs, but if you got ninety three ninety four you can. On the radar gun. Just a pop up to shallow right. Polanco the long strides and comes off his glove. It'll go as a base hit. Polanco got there. And I don't think he got a very good jump. This ball was hit off the end of the bat, but Polanco can outrun these kind of situations. He does, but then can't close the deal. Got the big glove wide open, but never closed it. Now it's Matt Adams. Dribbler in front of the plate. Fair ball. Cervelli to first for the out. <laughs> Everything you can imagine is happening There's in this nothing, game. Nothing normal. It's no. That old cliche. Something you've never seen before. Every time you come out and watch a baseball game, and, and now we're waiting to see if Mike Matheny wants to challenge this. Matheny is asking Peralta to wait. Yep, this former catcher has seen these kind of plays. Thumbs down. It's like the Roman Coliseum. Yeah. The appeal dies. <laughs> down. David Bell is his bench coach. One of those uh, too close to challenge plays, maybe. Strike one on Johnny Peralta. He's been on base three times in this game. Hasn't everybody? Yeah. Clubs have combined for 12 runs, 18 hits. Oh, and two. If this series began, everybody was talking about the two best pitching staffs in the National League going at it. And it would be a low scare, a low scoring series, much like last weekend in St. Louis. But 23 hits last night and 13 runs combined. Michael Waka starting against Francisco Liriano in last night's ball game. Jared Hughes strikes out Peralta. Jared Hughes pitches a scoreless top of the seventh inning and giving up that hit to Holiday off of Gregory Polanco's glove and he strands Holiday at second base. So things falling into place. We expect to see Tony Watson in the eighth and then Mark Melanson in the ninth, unless the Pirates can break this thing open. And we'll keep it here for the seventh inning stretch. And join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we say, take me out to the ball game.
disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, is celebrating 13 years. Watch every out-of-market game live or on demand at True HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, widget, and more. Every night on every device, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Craig, this game was made for the left field loonies. Yes, it They're was. Out in yep. force tonight. Yep. Jammed out there. Jared Hughes pitches a scoreless top of the seventh. Now the veteran lefty Randy Choate to face Gregory Polanco and Neil Walker. And then we'll see a different pitcher against Andrew McCutcheon. Polanco takes ball one. We should have visited Ross Morgan on his boat before the game when we did the open out. We there. should have. We absolutely should have. Yep. We saw some folks out there. Uh, the oh, there is Ross, uh, the Prez, the founder and Prez. Watch oh, out! Watch oh, out! Watch oh, out! Watch on. out! Watch out! Ooh. I think that's Ross's boat, but it, that's a, a I'd boat like made to be for there. Ross. Yeah. Yeah. They're watching us on Root Sports. Hey, you can't get a ticket of the game. Watch it on your yacht. Yep. Right outside the ballpark. Yep. And we need to we wait. Need to, we need yeah, to wave. Wait, wait, the, wait. One second here. Maybe we can ask Pete Toma. We'll wave at the folks after this pitch. They still don't realize that, that they're on. They're looking like they're having a good time on there, Yatched. Now they're waving. All right, now jump. Come on, who's going to do it? Into the Allegheny. Two and two. And he lays off. That breaking ball from. Randy Choate. Polanco has grounded out, doubled in the run, and walked. But he strikes him out. Well, Greg, I know you had a busy morning uh, today with the Miracle League field. I had a lot of fun today. Uh, Manny Sanguian and John Candelaria and I and Clint Hurdle will spend some time with the Janney Corporation over in the Winter Garden PPG place. And then I went over to the History Center and spent some time with the Sabre people. And uh, they know how much I hate statistics, but we told some stories, so we got everything. Uh, we were on level ground. Really good, good group of baseball people. Walker tries to punt for a hit, gets jammed, and all he could do was punt it back to Choate. For the second out, and I do want to get that on the record. These these guys are in the stats and, and all that, but they love their baseball. They're over overall great great baseball fans. Absolutely. Pitching change. Bucks up by a couple.
which might not be anything to worry about, but just watch Polanco's reaction as he kind of grimaces and then holds the area of his right shoulder. Another watch angle face. here. Yeah. You know, you, you really worry when you see things like that because so many of these oblique strains and that kind of thing happen yeah. oftentimes on swings. But he doesn't seem to be concerned about it at the moment, so maybe it's nothing, but I thought we'd show it to you. That new pitcher is Miguel so so Sokolovich. Sokolovich. Just uh, appearance number four. Sokolovic got the win on Sunday. And he pitched a 1 2 3 top of the 14th inning. He got Andrew McCutcheon to ground out. It was his first big league victory. Well, McCutcheon is just one for three. He's lined out twice once to left, once to second. This ball hard to center, but it'll carry out to John Jay. Pirates up 7 5. Lined out to left field in the third, lined out to second base in the fifth, and here the ball hit hard to center. Andrew McCutcheon says, no. What are you going to do? Hit the ball hard and Watch take it. your chances. Oh, 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 look at this. Oh, come on, man. Maybe uh, a little bit of, maybe a little bit of anger up at the sky. What else can I do? But then apologize. <laughs> he has hit the ball hard. All four times up. And now Tony Watson. Facing Jason Hayward. Strike one. I think Clint Hurdle is thinking this game is in the bag right now. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> it's this kind of game, it's it's never a sure thing. But tonight, times ten. Easy play. Here's our T Mobile game changer. It was the triple play. 
Walker goes up. Knows he's going to get to third quickly. And has Hayward well off the bat. Once they got Jung Ho Gung's attention. You know, Hayward didn't know what to do. Jung's running out. It, 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 Gung is running off the field. What am I supposed to do? I'm here for between second and third. I'm not sure what has yeah, happened. Gung almost fold him. First 4 5 4 triple play in Major League Baseball history. There's Mercer gliding to his left. Two outs. Mark Reynolds. Oh, for two with a walk. Ball one. Mark Melanson goes through his eighth inning routine as he prepares to pitch the ninth. Mike on Reynolds. Yep. Tony backs off a little bit. I'll tell you, when Tony Watson throws the fastball, it, it does look like it's spring loaded. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of a sudden, bang, it, it's, it's jumping out of the hand. It comes down low. Almost a little bit of that Laredo stuff we used to hear yeah. about. That Danny Darwin gunslinger stuff out of right out of Laredo, Texas. This is a good look at what you're facing with Tony. Great shot. He's got two strikes on Reynolds. Pirates trying to turn this weird game into a traditional save situation. Hughes, Watson, Melanson. Oh, a rare free pass from Watson. Check out the Nissan Road ahead. Tomorrow's starters, a couple of left handers. Jeff Locke for the Pirates and Tyler Lyons for the Cardinals. Coverage begins at 1 o'clock. Mother's Day here, free uh, tote bags to all moms tomorrow. Coming to the ball game, courtesy of the MLB Network. And uh, moms and kids can run the bases after the game. Here's Peter Borges pinch hitting. Worley went five innings, gave up five runs, nine hits. Rob Scahill, one, two, three, sixth. This would be Scahill's game to win, by the way. Jared Hughes, a scoreless seventh, and now Watson. No one, two on Borges. Started last night's game against the left hander. Liriano. A walk to Reynolds just the second this season, allowed by Watson. Close again as Tony comes upstairs. You will get that call on occasion. Didn't get it there.
Ground ball left side. Got to go to second on this one. And they will. And Jordy Mercer, a pretty play to Neil Walker. Choreograph. Kid Runner appearing at stage A.E. on May 28th. Pirates lead the Cardinals 7-5. Pirates look to add on some runs. They've got Peter Borges, the Cardinals do, remaining in the game to play center field. Pete Cosma comes on to play third base. And Mitch Harris. Lieutenant. Yep. Mitch Harris from the U.S. Navy. Five years of active duty and will make his seventh appearance. Sean Rodriguez We're on to play left field in the fourth inning. Starling Marte left with dizziness. And Rodriguez has one at bat. Leadoff single in the sixth inning. And broken bat, bouncer to Cosmo. I know you guys were in St. Louis last weekend, and I heard the story about Mitch Harris. I mean, that. That is that is pretty great stuff. I mean, it really is. It really is. Congratulations to this man. 13th round pick in 2008 out of the U.S. Naval Academy. And uh, appreciates the fact that the Cardinals stayed with him after all those years in the military. So he had to forego his baseball career. I wonder if he's ever met Roger Staubach. I wonder. Three deployments, including a couple of turns in the Persian Gulf. And now Pedro Alvarez with one out. And a strike called one and one. Alvarez has walked twice, scored a pair of runs. He led off the second inning with a free pass and scored. He followed the Rodriguez. Base hit with a walk, and he scored on the Mercer double off the wall at center. It's two and one. You see Mitch Harris will go down to Robbie Smikowski in a moment. He has more on Mitch Harris, the, the two tours of the Persian Gulf, also a mission to Russia. 
drug operation in South America. And a liner off of Harris. And a nice play, but a drop by Wong. A base hit for Alvarez. And let's go back downstairs to Robbie. So I had a conversation with Mitch Harris when we were in St. Louis last week, and I asked him, how do you stay in baseball shape while you're serving overseas that long? We're talking almost five full years. His answer was two words. You don't. The biggest focus was keeping his body in the best shape he could. That way, if he ever got the chance to play again, all he needed to do was push his arm back into shape. He said sometimes when they were on the ship, sometimes they would throw a football around when they had the time. Occasionally he would throw a baseball, but he never had the chance to do it at full speed. So some impressive stuff by Mitch Harrison. If you're wondering what he did, he did three tours of duty. He was a weapons officer, a combat information center officer, and a training officer in his three tours of duty. Two in the Persian Gulf and one that combined Russia and South America in 2011. The, uh, unbelievable. Mitch Harris. Thank you, Lieutenant Harris. Now Xiong Ho Gong. Takes ball one and gets away from Molina. And Alvarez trots to second. The Bucks look for at least an insurance run. More, more. See how Molina plays this. Yeah. Backhand side going down. That's rather have the glove turned the other way. Not going to call Mr. Molina out very often. Strike on Molina. Uh, on Gunn. With Molina behind the plate. And that wild pitch allowing Alvarez to move into scoring position for Gunn. Taps this one foul. It's one and two. So Melanson will be facing Cosma, Colton Wong, and Matt Holliday. Those career numbers. For each of those gentlemen against Mark Melanson. And foul. Couple of hits for Gong. A run scored. Checks. Nope. Strike three call. So two outs. Mitch Harris made his big league debut on April the 25th. Last night he got rung up on a check swing. That's right. Yeah, what check swing is it? We try to call timeout. It's not granted timeout. Is it the eighth inning? Last night against Seth Manus. And Francisco Cervelli walked and scored his last time up. Officially 0 for 2. Trying to get the wave going. A little disappointed we haven't had the wave yet. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Bounce right is short. 6 3 on the put out. Two run lead for Mark the Shark.
Pirates. Coverage starts at 1 o'clock. The Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason here on Root Sports. Seven five, Pirates in front of the Cardinals and the Buccos make some changes and Josh Harrison in left field for the first time this season. He played everywhere last year until settling in as the starting third baseman. And now Jay Hay out in left. Sean Rodriguez moves from left to first. Mark Melanson tries to save it for Scahill. Looking for number six. Hope that in the fifth spot. And we showed you the career numbers of the players he will be facing. Beginning with Cosma. Was first at bat. Going to play third base in the bottom of the eighth. Ball one. How many times last year? Two miles per hour there, by the way, Steve. That's a kind of a headline. Yep. Mark Melanson, that's a, that'd be the fastest he has thrown this season. Yeah. Last year, a lot of uh, situations where four zero was put up by the bullpen from the fifth inning on. Trying to do that tonight. Happened a lot last year. One ball and one strike. All right, now they got the wave going. Okay, that's good. You asked for it. Yeah, I like the wave. You got it. One ball, one strike. One and two. This is Melanson's first save situation since the 25th of April. He picked up the save in Arizona against the Diamondbacks. Bouncing ball. Third base, quick throw over. 5 3, one down. Gone to Rodriguez. No base runners here in the top of the night. Don't bring that time runner to play. Smooth, strong. Good throw across. Well done. Melanson, a little slip, but fine as he gets the second out. Another one, smooth and strong. No panic, no rush. Stay calm. So 38,068, second sellout of the season. On their feet, looking to even the series against these Cardinals and let them know the Buccos are going to be very much involved this season in the National League Central Division. Matt Holliday, three hits and four bats. And a strike. Yes, he did, and it's 0-2 on Matt Holliday. This crowd is having themselves a night. Yeah, it's more like it.
Oh, ho, ho. did Paul Emmel just flinch a bit? I thought he's backing up to give the That's big right too. <laughs> that close. One ball, two strikes. Oh, Holiday, a big cut and a foul. It stays one ball and two strikes on Holiday. Melanson looking for his sixth save. Everybody getting ready to let loose. In the air to right. Polanco raised the Johnny Roger on a sellout night at PNC Park. The Bucks defeat the first place Cardinals and a wild night. And a 7-5 victory. Boy, if you bought a ticket for this one, we'll say it every once in a while. You got your money's worth tonight, and it's not over. Fireworks after the fireworks, and the Bucks work very hard. Come from behind to win this thing. Fans here tonight, both at the ballpark and on TV, saw the first ever 4-5-4 triple play in the history of Major League Baseball. And a very entertaining game. Neil Walker involved in the triple play and homered. And the Pirates scoring three in the second, a run in the fifth, and three in the sixth, and win it 7-5. Let's go to the studio, Dan and Teague.